Hello there and welcome to this bonus episode of Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy. All the while, fixing it up for some pretty major cruising. If you would find that interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. Don't forget to ring the bell. Well, let's finally get these steps wrapped up. I'm not going to show you. They're they're right there. You got to wait till the end of the episode. Jump back in time, pick it up. I'm not quite sure where. Oh, embarrassing piano hinges. All right then. I am not proud of this. These are cheap uh, brass colored steel stamped hardware store piano hinges. They're a few dollars. Brass piano hinges in this abundance. Always with the light. Uh, is extremely expensive and currently not even in stock where I get them here. So I'm going to put them on with these and ideally replace them sometime with real brass. Will that happen? If they rust, they'll certainly happen. Anyway, let's just cut these to fit and accept that I'm sinning. That worked out really, really well. I hate putting on hinges. I don't know why. Well, like all the things I hate doing, it's because I'm not very good at it. So, I'm going to do the top one first, because that should be the easiest to get a decent alignment. What I'm going to do before I even try is I'm going to remount the... Uh, little stops here, which at least will hold it flat when it's in the down position. So let's get going on that. What a glorious day. Mm. All right then, so this goes in here like this. And at least for now, it has a nicely eased fit. So in a perfect world, uh, I'll be able to put this piano hinge in here, right about there, and everything will be happy. <laughs> the trick, of course, is making sure it stays in alignment left-right when I do this, and making sure when I put the piano hinge on, it doesn't go up or down on an angle. Now, piano hinges are much more forgiving than regular mortise hinges, but still, yeah. Okay, so here's the technique I'm going to use. I'm going to clamp this on right here. Okay, the reason I had to use this clamping board is I had to make sure this side of the joint was tight. It also gives me a lip to uh, drive the edge of the hinge up against. And if everything lines up perfectly, I'm very happy. Now, this is a bit awkward to work at but I'm content that this is accurate. Whew. Okay, I do have a secret weapon. Some of you will have seen me use this before or you may be familiar with it in other means. This is a self-centering drill bit. Basically, it's a spring-loaded collar outside a drill bit. I don't know if you can see that from where you are. Okay, you've seen me use this before. It's super handy for um, putting well-centered screws into countersunk holes for hinges. This is a perfect example. Well, these aren't countersunk holes, but it's still going to work because there's enough of a sort of shoulder on it that this will work pretty well. Okay, so let's have a stab. <sighs> Perfect. Let's drill the first hole. First pair of holes, actually. So the trick for me, anyway, is to just get two holes started and then put some screws in. I'm actually using the nasty little fake brass screws that it came with um, just to get going. Okay, from here on, it should be straightforward. Okay, are we all ready to see how well I did here? <laughs> moment of truth. Oh, it touches. Oh, 
Oh, that's okay. That's okay. This screw's not. There we go. <laughs> that was close. This screw isn't tight. Whew. Okay. 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 It actually is perfect. Woo. Okay. Let me put some more screws in. Gotta admit, this thing is a lifesaver. Now the subsequent steps are going to be a little more complicated because after all, this is the tread, this is the tread extension, but the tread extension is wider than the tread itself. So it's really hard to tell where it's centered. So if I take the two little tread extension widey sidey thingies, I can get a pretty good idea of where it's all going to go but that's why I didn't do the final sanding on the ends of the treads or any of the sanding on the little extension-y pieces here. Let me get sorted out here. All right, so in principle, uh, if I flip this over to here, that's in the open position, keep it centered, I can put the hinge right on there and I should be okay. All right, good enough for me, okay. All right then, right there like that. Okay, now the one thing that you'll note is that the main part of the tread is now proud of the side parts and that's because of the thickness of the hinge. Uh, so I need to calculate what that is and then rip it off the back of the um, tread. Uh, after all the holes are drilled, the holes will go further in so that it doesn't affect it. I think that's gonna be just Fine. Perfect. And thus begins the glue up. You will recognize this as a riser with the tread extension. Okay. So the thing with this is I do not want any glue squeezing out up into there. So I'm just going to glue the very edge of this and mostly at the bottom. Okay. <laughs> Go squeeze out the bottom. That's what I want to see. And none at the top. Perfect. Okay, this next bit is really a fiddle. It's a glue up, right? But the pieces I have to put in are a um, basically tight fit between the two sides. Uh, where does this one go? It goes, uh, it goes that way up here. Um, so how do I glue that in? Well, the trick is to lower it in back just a little bit and glue down the edges it's gonna go and walk it in over the glue. That's another reason the PL is really good. It's not gonna drip down all over the place and because it's really thick, it just rolls in underneath and does a pretty good job of this. But still, it's, yeah. It's... Okay, so. And into the glue. Nice. Obviously, there's no going back on this. Okay, now I'm not going to get it too tight yet because I don't want to pull it together too hard for the next one to go in. Perfect. One chance at this, Peter. All right, and the final piece is the last riser. This one is not nearly so critical because it's not a finish yet. Exposed at the front. Beauty. Okay, I think I can now go ahead and tighten everything up. And this is where we hope we don't get any squeeze out. All right, all the little side ledgers. Uh, you don't need to watch, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, so I took the hinges outside and I gave them just a little attention with the countersink just to get the screws to not sit so proud so that they won't bite. Anyway, okay. So of course, this isn't the installation. This is simply the last uh, alignment fit. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now it gets more complicated. These ones need to be trimmed down. And they need to be trimmed down exactly the width of the piano hinge. 
So uh, the easiest way I can think of doing that is putting the uh, fence up against the blade and adding the piano hinge in on this side. Right? Right? And here. Okay, and down. Uh, so let's put the test pieces in. To left, to right. Well, I've got everything fitting perfect. So it's the final tidy up sanding on uh, these components. And uh, you know what's after that? Good old tongue oil. As I've said before, one of the most wonderful things about tongue oil as a first finish is its tolerance to dust. It basically turns your uh, cloth into a tack rag because it's an oil and basically doesn't mind getting all oily. Some of you will notice I didn't put the floor of this locker in yet. I figured it would just be too hard to oil and finish in around it. Um, it's just going to be plywood anyway, so pretty straightforward. Now I'm not going to oil inside the cabinet. Some may leak in, but I'm not too worried about that. Um, because the final finish on this will be uh, the same varathane that I put on the uh, wheelhouse sole here because I consider this stairs, it's a high traffic, uh, high wear area and uh, it'll look just fine, especially having got some tongue oil on first. Yes, 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 yes. color starting to come out into this I tell you when you first put it on it goes on kind of golden but as soon as it starts to react with that mahogany and soak in wow okay okay, okay we got stuff to do here Favorite towel. See you later. Okay, on with the next little project. And that is finally uh, subdividing the sole panels into the various panels that will lift up and be hatches access to the engine and all things below. I wanna get this done now because between the companionway step project, this project, and a little bit of woodwork required for the helm and the uh, electrical panel, uh, I'm not doing much more woodwork in the next period before the hollow, so I'd like to just, like, get the dusty stuff dealt with. Point of note, of course, we're not finished with the companionway steps. Uh, we have to put final finish, uh, reassemble them, and uh, put them back in place and they're sitting outside on the dock, staying uh, not too dusty while the oil dries. I think I might have mentioned before that every piece of cabinetry, every component that I build on the boat, that's within reason, can go out the window. The reason for that is, well, here's a good example of it. During some other kind of work, I need to be able to get that kind of stuff off the boat. So all the cabinetry on the boat pretty much can leave the boat for major refit work, accessing stuff. Uh, it's just more, compartmentalized component. I, anyway, I think you know what I mean. Okay, let's figure out where to cut this sole up. Okay, so what I'm doing now is determining where I can feel the um, beams under here, the uh, sole beams, and I'm just determining where they are so that I can determine where I'm gonna cut this because I had preset where those would work out for the various panels and I just wanna confirm that they still make sense. Okay then, so here's the basic plan. As uh, some of you know, the, the principal storage under the two sides is fuel tanks, and they'll come to about here. 
Um, at the front, against this bulkhead, there are cabinets that are a foot deep. Some of you may have seen, I've already built the one for the helm. There'll be one that matches here. So the first foot, or maybe 13 inches of the sole here, has to be able to stay down. So between the fuel tanks and that, I'm going to take out a section here. You can sort of see where it is. And that'll lift up for access to storage, general storage, between the fuel tanks and the batteries, which sit underneath the uh, cabinets. So the same one foot strip will carry through on this panel. And in fact, the same uh, cut will come through on this panel. And this will be a general um, access panel for uh, storage and uh, access to the batteries, which will be on trays that can move. Okay, from this line aft, that whole section is directly above the enclosed insulated engine box. And it's got a bulkhead at this point, as well as at the back and the two side cuts. So it's completely enclosed. So lifting this entire panel is access to the engine. Now, it's not that simple because there's going to be a dinette, or going to be a settee, not settee, it's going to be furniture over here. Uh, now, this component of it is movable, but largely it will exist out to about here, almost halfway across. So I'll also cut this panel lengthwise and put a piano hinge in it so that for 99% of regular engine maintenance, you'll have a lift ring here and you just lift this section of the panel and you can access, I mean, uh, the, checking the oil, um, certainly uh, checking the fuel filter. The main fuel filters will be at the back. You can top up oil, you can top up coolant. Um, the fuel selection valves will be at the back. So this section here that I can open either work from this end or from the companion way will be the basic everyday engine access. Anyway, there's more to it than that, but that'll get us started. And for some reason, I can't find my chalk line. So homebrew chalk lining here. Okay, so the intent here is to see how closely my marks line up with, oh, well, there's an engine in here. A little harder to walk around. Um, how closely they line up with the structure I've already put below. Okay, this looks very promising because this is the back edge of this. And this one likewise is very close. And this one also pretty much right on. Okay, so I'm pleased with that. So I know I can cut these at the marks I've decided and it will span the structure that's already there. Likewise, I can put a straight cut across all three panels and it'll line up nicely. I didn't want it to stagger or to be on an angle. Anyway, I think you know what I mean. Time to cut. Hello, baby. Oh, aren't you beautiful? I've been checking regularly to make sure that condensation wasn't building up underneath this tarp, and it hadn't at all. And it's bone dry and nice and clean. Oh, soon, soon. And let's see. Nice and clean. Whew. Nice, 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 nice. <sighs> so, this is done, the center's done, now over there. Many of you will have been wondering, if, is there going to be any structure across this abyss over the engine? And yes, of course, there is. Um, all I've had is the plywood spanning this 38 inch gap for all this time because it's incredibly strong plywood and I don't jump up and down much in the middle. But that's not a permanent solution, is it? Of course, at the two new seams, uh, there will be 
um, relatively permanent structure and then there'll be a cross uh, an extra cross member in here that will be removable as well as two cross members that cross over above the engine that will also be removable exactly where they'll go I'm not quite sure yet because I don't want to put one right over let's say the oil cap so I'm going to tinker with that a bit and as you can imagine these two pieces still span all the way. The panel here, I was gonna cut down the middle so it could fold up. I'm not gonna do that today. One, I'm running out of time and it's time to start editing if you wanna watch this tomorrow. But two, I don't wanna to have to figure out exactly where these cross members are gonna go right now um, until I have a better sense of how I'm gonna maintain the engine, things like that. Anyway, be assured, I'm gonna be carrying on with it tomorrow and you'll see it in the subsequent week's episode. Beauty! And here we go folks, after uh, sitting overnight letting the oil soak in a little bit, uh, it's going to get darker and redder even than this. Uh, so I'll have another day or so for this to dry and then another coat of oil. And then we start with the varnish, not varnish, for everything. Let's put it in place, see what it looks like. Get my toes out of the way. I like it. And what do you think, folks? I think it looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, the two little side pieces for the bottom step, I knew I was going to have to cut. I just haven't had the heart to do it yet because of the way they work with the frame here. But the actual step fits nicely between the uh, two uh, door frames. I still have to undercut the door ever so slightly. But on the whole, I am very... Very pleased. Well, hello and welcome to this bonus Travels with Jordy beer of the day, it being a bonus issue. Let's get right into it. Uh, this is a beer I've never seen before from a brewery I've never seen before. It's Canning Brewery uh, from Picticton, uh, British Columbia, and it's the Trellis uh, India Pale Ale. I have huge expectations of this. No, I, I just hope it's kind of good. Oop, it's probably pretty frothy. I'll have to pour very carefully. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, the final and bonus episode of putting these steps together. I am so thrilled with the steps and um, <laughs> it's now the anticipation of getting to use them because it'll be several coats of oil and several coats of varnish before I can actually walk on them at all. Cheers uh, to that great success. Oh, okay. Wow, I hope that's regularly available. That is really, really good. Really good. Canning Brewery. Okay, awesome. Anyway, let's jump right in. Um, there's not a lot on my sheet today. <laughs> so uh, yesterday's um, Travels Dirty t-shirt winner, unfortunately you don't get a full week, but I don't want to be overlap. You don't understand what I mean. It's Tim Vukman. I hope I pronounced that correctly. So Tim, get a hold of me and we'll make sure you get your shirt. And uh, cheers to you, Tim. All that leaves is a new word of the week and the new word of the week is going to be productive because I'm feeling productive and I'm going to have to be productive because I'm now closing in on five weeks till hollow. Uh, if you want to jot it on your calendar, I am booked at Vector uh, Marine Services for hollow on the 23rd of April. And uh, of course, a lot has to happen before then. Cheers.